Today, earlier, we did a live stream that was very interesting because it's our first first-hand encounter with actual direct Vedic astronomy, right from the Bhagavad Purana. So I'll put a link to that live stream recording in the description below this video if you want to see all the details. After that stream, I spent a few hours boiling down the topic, boiling down the content, and writing an article on that. So now I would like to share that with you. And here we go. At first glance, the fifth canto's tale of Priyavrata appears to be a wild mythology about a flat earth with an impossibly big Mount Olympus at its center, which gets divided by gigantic chariots into seven concentric continents shaped like donuts, bearing no resemblance whatsoever to the actual world we inhabit and see every day. On closer inspection, however, this tale winds up being a description of a heliocentric solar system remarkably compatible with the world observed by empirical science. First things first. The area being transformed in this story is not Earth or Bu. It is the sky, Buva. Reference is 5131. The local space above and around the Earth. The agents of this transformation are seven temporarily luminous celestial bodies created by Prevrata's mystic power. Reference is 5130. The visible solar system indeed consists of seven celestial bodies, and cosmologists say they were indeed luminous when they first began to coalesce from the more uniform mass that previously filled local space. The weight of these celestial bodies has had an effect on space. It created depressions in the space, parikyata, which then caused matter to coalesce, upaklipta. This is exceedingly reminiscent of Einstein's model of the relationship between gravity and space, and also matches the description cosmologists currently give for the formation of the solar system. The coalesced matter is portrayed as islands, dvipa, surrounded by massive traverses described as oceans, sindava, references 5131. The distance between the islands is, quote, almost entirely taken up by the oceans around them. Iva bhyantara dvipa samana, 5133. And this traverse doubles in size between each island, 5132. When mapped out, this looks quite similar to modern maps of the solar system. If this is indeed a description of the solar system, the outermost ocean would correspond to interstellar space, which would also make sense because it is by far the largest ocean and has no definite outer edge. Priyavrata did all of this in an attempt to balance the unequal lengths of day and night over the course of a year, because that causes unstable seasonal climates. The tale informs us, 5130, that these changes result from the sun's orbital motion north and south of a central point. This is the Mount Olympus of the tale, Suragiri Meru. This name conventionally means the tall mountain of the gods, but literally means the line on which the sun rises and falls. In other words, the equator. From the description, it seems Priyavrata accelerated the sun through its solstices and decelerated it at its equinoxes by subjecting it to various gravitational forces from variously sized bodies at various distances, the larger ones being further away, similar to how the further planets in our observable solar system are remarkably larger than the closer ones. 
The luminosity of these objects would have also balanced whatever imbalance remained after this. It is safe to say Priyavrata would have had to make the Sun the focal point for the orbits of these seven celestial bodies. This would mean that the tale actually describes the creation of a heliocentric solar system. The oceans between each island are not identical to one another. Each one has a unique element mixed with water. Only the outermost ocean is pure water. It seems that the unique element in a particular ocean is the seed for the unique features of the island formed in it. Indeed, the naming system for the oceans and islands bears this out. The ocean is always named after a type of water, and the island is named for a type of plant. Plants, after all, grow from the nutrients in water. The quality of life on each island can be ascertained from the type of water it formed from, and from the name of the sun Priyavrata established as its regent. For example, the first realm, which is our world, coalesces from a salty ocean, kshara, like our sweat, and is ruled by agnidra, which means initiating an effort, literally lighting the sacrificial fire. The second realm coalesces from a sugary ocean, ikshurasa, and is ruled by idhmajiha, which means the fuel tongue. Life in the second realm, then, is less characterized by sweat and has more abundance of the sweet things in life people always want to taste. This tale primarily describes the formation of the seven realms upwards from the earth, Buva. Realms and planets may be related, but are not entirely identical. It seems that the planets of our empirical solar system echo the relationship of the seven realms of Bhuva. In other words, bodies in our empirical space are analog to super-empirical levels of existence in the Earth's local universe. So, I will also put the text of this in the description below, because sometimes it's easier to read this at your own pace. Thank you very much.